Beirende. Yes, just go ahead. I, Father Kenoti Kiduri, do solemnly swear that the evidence that I shall give before this committee in respect of the matters before this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Honorable Chair and Honorable Senators, uh, for the record, my name is Morel Rubonfis Mawera, and I'll be leading this witness in his evidence. For, to enable the Honorable Chair and the committee follow-up, the witness statement for this particular witness is in the Assembly's Documents, Volume Number 5, pages 14 to 21. And maybe before I proceed, Honorable Chair, can I get an indication as to the amount of time? How much time do you want? Yes. We didn't use it very well. We have done one hour, 25. So I'll give you 20 minutes. Very well. Very and well, I'll Chair. give the cross-examining team 10 minutes. Very well, Chair. I'll be able to conclude within that time. So, Father Elias Kinoti. Answer. What do you do for a living? Well, as my title reigns, I'm a priest, a Catholic priest, um, but I'm also a teacher in the university, Mary University, and I also am the parish priest of uh, St. Rita Parish in Chiru. I also am the chairman of all the priests, religious sisters and brothers in the Diocese of Meru. In addition to the Open Society, I have been a member of the MYS for the last uh, two years since it was inaugurated. And what is MYS in full? Mary Youth Service, that is. So you've been a board member of the Mary Service? You yes, yes, and also a member of the budgeting forum in the county. So when were you appointed to the Merit Service Board? It shouldn't be two years ago. Okay. The corona issue when it came in and uh, the process slowed. Are you aware, or rather, have you read the impeachment motion? Yes, I have. Are you aware, or rather, you can inform the Honorable Chair in this committee when the governor appointed a husband to the when a governor appointed a husband to the MOS board? Should when? be September. Okay. And um, yeah. Were you a member of the board? I then? still am. Okay. I think, Honorable Chair, uh, we will not be playing the annex. Annex 2 was played in the morning, and the transcript thereof is at page 50 to 52. So I think of the of volume 1 of the assembly's documents. So I'll just proceed with the examination. So when the governor made this appointment, you confirmed that you are a member of the board. Sure. Where ordinarily, or who ordinarily would have the documents or the letters of appointment, or this particular letter of appointment for the, for the governor's husband, who would have this letter? According to the Meru Youth Service Act, the board recruits its own member staffs, and where need me, through the consultation with the Meru, and the Meru County Public Service uh, Board. Okay. So, does the MYS board have a copy of this letter of appointment? We don't have any. I have not seen any if there is. And we haven't had a meeting since before election, that is. What happened on the 17th of October at the Igoji Boys Secondary School, the former Igoji Boys Secondary School? Well, I was actually in class. Uh, doing my normal lectures and I saw a call from the bishop which I have to pick any time apart from probably when I'm in mass and I asked, excused myself from the class and uh, took a walk and listened to the bishop. The bishop asked me whether I have time to go and have a briefing with the bishop or with the honorable governor on how the MYS came to be located at the Egoji Boys School. Since I am a member of the board, as well as a priest, and I was privy to both 
processes. So, what happened specifically? So, uh, once I told the bishop, it's fine, I can let me go and brief uh, our excellency. I asked the bishop, is the meeting at the, our office or where is it? And the bishop told me the governor is going at the center. So, I am to go to the center. It's quite far because I am on the other side of the town, that is in Chiro, which is almost 40, 40 to 45 kilometers to Egoji. So, I picked my things from class and asked the students we could meet another time, drove to Egoji. On my way, I called the county secretary to be sure where we need to meet, where I need to meet the, the governor. And uh, the county secretary told me the governor is going at the center. So I drove to Egoji. There were other two priests, Father Lawrence, who runs a bonding primary school right in the same premises, sharing the same piece of land with the MIS, but on different corners. And there was also the PA to the bishop, Father Patrick Micheni. So I also called Father Patrick to ask him, where are you guys and what can we, where, where do you need to meet? Then Father Lawrence also called me asked me whether I can come to highlight exactly what transpired um, between the MIS and the land that the church sits its schools. So what attempts did you make to address these issues about the land with the governor? What attempts, when you arrived at the former Egoji Boys Secondary School, what attempts did you make? Actually, long before I arrived, I asked the bishop, are we going to have a short brief meeting? I asked where the meeting will be. I asked the CS, the county secretary, whether there is a briefing or why we are going to have it. So in my knowledge, as I went with great goodwill, I knew that we will have a short briefing on with the bishop, with the, his our excellency, on the processes that had taken place between the MIS and the church on the premises. But on arrival, I was told that uh, Excellency said she is not going to meet anybody in bond rooms. That is not a, a meeting, not an, an issue to be dealt with in the bond room. So I was a little confused. Do I go back or do I do? Anyway, I went and sat. She had already started talking and uh, doing a cross-examining people every time. And uh, then at some point, she asked, is there a member of the board? And I looked around, there was nobody. So I was compelled by wish to give some information to just say I'm around. And I went, understanding, and uh, she asked me what happened, that uh, the land that belongs to the county was leased uh, to the county by the diocese. And actually, I, re I remember saying, that's a question that we would have dealt with in a more a formal setting because those are processes that happen in a formal setting. For me, I've always known that land to belong to the church because according to the Trusts Act that is uh, has been repealed now, uh, occupation and the use over 60 years grants such uh, rights to lease the land if one has used it. So that's my understanding. Uh, what evidence do you have before this committee to show what transpired? There is the, the video okay. that uh, was taken. During chair, that, uh, Honorable Chair, there is an X-15, but because you are pressed for time, we will not be playing it. The transcript is on page 108 to 114 of the volume 1, the impeachment motion. The transcript is from page 108 to 114. In that video, what is the governor accusing the Catholic Church of? Well, it was really disheartening because uh, we, she accused us of being at a cartel. Actually, she mentioned the bishop. I think the term bishop may mean quite different things to different people. The Catholic bishop is not one of those guys you mention anywhere. You see, he has not even responded. A very humble man. And uh, we as priests and the Catholics there were taken back as cartels. And she actually said that this is how ma your money has been stolen from the county. Meaning now this lease is illegal. The ownership of land is illegal. 
and the their master have been a cartel that sat to decide, you know, this piece of land belongs to us and we can lease it and make money. In fact, leasing this land took us quite a long time as a board. We looked at Egembe and Tigania, and our argument was Egembe and Tigania do not have any uh, government institution. As you know, a government institution benefits the local community, and we didn't want to put that institution particularly in Imenti. And it was not discrimination. It is a way of sharing resources for the, the community. So we looked around and we are... Uh, Honorable Chair. Right. I think that is enough. Honorable Chair, I want to refer the witness to Volume 2 of the Governor's documents, specifically at page 113, mm -hmm. the list. And maybe you can, read, you can read aloud paragraph B on page 113. The landlord has caused to be erected on the said plot a building known as Diocese of Meru, registered trustees, Egoji Boys School, here after referred to as the property. Who is the, land, who is the landlord in this context? It is the Diocese of Meru. And the lease is between? The, who are the parties to the lease, rather? Who so, are the parties to the lease? Please come again. Who are the parties to the lease? Or this lease is between who and who? The Diocese of Meru and uh, Meru uh, County. We can then turn to page. So what facilities are available at the former Egoji Boys Secondary School and now the Mary Youth Service Center? What facilities? It's, uh, there is a big building which, uh, which is a dining where the, the youth eats. It was a high school. There are uh, quite an, there is a dorm, a big one. There are uh, office buildings which were classes and we transformed them as y or MYS into offices. Who developed these facilities? The church has developed the last 60 years. Why has the county government been paying lease premiums to the married? Why has the county government been, been paying lease premiums to the Diocese of Meru? Because of these facilities and uh, the church has used the land for the last 60 years, put its money there. Okay. Honorable Chair, I will further refer the witness to page 137 of still volume 2 of the Governor's documents. We can turn to page 137. The report from the Office of the Governor. Are you there? Sure. From the heading of that document, or rather the letterhead, from which office does that, does that document emanate? County Government of Meru. Okay. Which, spe which specific office? The Office of the Governor. Okay. Is the report dated? No, I don't see a date anywhere. You can turn to page... I think the last... You can turn to page 153 which has our next chance, but the report ends at page one, 140. Is that report signed? So, sorry, which page, 153 or 140? Check page 140 first. Because the rest are annexes to that report, Honorable Chair. The council, I don't see any sign. The report is not signed. Yeah. Can, can that report be safely relied upon by this committee to form an opinion? Mm, it's difficult to rely on something that has no uh, date, no signature, honorable chair. It couldn't be a Google document, couldn't be anything. So I'm not sure how reliable this would be. Does that report, just by a mere look, you can go through the document. Yes. On page 138, there is a heading there, I think, community grievances. Mm -hmm. Is there anywhere in the report where it captures the sentiments of the Catholic Diocese of Meru? I don't see any council, and that could be a serious omission because the church has its own perspective. Turn to page 139, where the governor proposes a way forward. You can read it aloud. 
governor to establish a task force to look into the issues raised by all actors and forward the report with the recommendations. All actors to be involved and be part of the task force. Who are the actors in this context? Should be the Catholic Church, Diocese of Meru, the county, as well as the community I want to believe. But the report does not capture the sentiments of the Catholic Diocese? Yes, that's left out. Is the governor legally empowered? Or who, which body, which public body is legally empowered to investigate allegations of grabbing of public land? As far as I know, if I'm not wrong, is the National Land Commission. That's the one that deals with these issues. So how would you describe the conduct of the governor in relation to the accusations of land grabbing against the Catholic Church? Actually, the reason why I came as a witness is because of the abusive nature with which this was done. Not so much as who owns the land and who doesn't, because I think this, that doesn't rest in this petition. But I was really, I personally felt very uh, humiliated. I felt very abused verbally. I felt my church belittled. I felt there was a possibility of civil uh, uh, unrest. In fact, I didn't stay until the end. Um, as I give a few global examples Sorry. of give a few global examples of cases where religious mobilization has led to civil strife. Sure, you made a nice question. Uh, I felt that now, as a Catholic and as a priest, I was put on a situation where I would be easily abused because I am part of a cartel. I am part of the stealing of county money, a county that and. I've been working with day and night. And uh, I remember that is I woke up myself. I got the two priests. I'm being their chairperson. Although I wasn't there in that capacity, I was there as a member of the MIS, and I asked them, Fathers, can we leave? And then the DCC, I think, he came and told me, No, please don't leave. So, by good luck, this county secretary called me because I had told him I'm going. So I picked my phone and I went to receive it, and I didn't go back. And the reason was the governor and put emotions and passion into the people on a negative perspective, that we were there trying to protect something we had stolen. And the crown would not even allow to hear from us, of, from, here, from me. And it reminded me of issues of terrorism that the world is dealing with. Okay. This is how it starts small like that. You put one group over the other. It reminded me, I teach government uh, and, and development and ethics. One of the classes I, I teach is the causes of genocide. I remember the Rwanda. How it, it starts small with Alinda saying something. It reminded me cases, uh, experiments of Pavlo, who, uh, people who tested when authority says something. What is the likelihood of many people following? It's very possible because we have a big number of people whose education is low and the literacy is low and the hearing from Melinda that this group is now classified, is dehumanized, it's okay to hurt them. So these cases all over the world help us understand the way I felt and the reason why I felt it is important for the nation to know as a leader, one has to have boundaries on what you say in public. Even assuming that they, this, you've said that this is not the forum to investigate questions of land grabbing by the Catholic Church, but even assuming that the governor was right in those allegations, would the governor's conduct be excused in light of the accusations against the Catholic Church? You know, there is also something called the sin of calumny, saying the truth where it is not in intent, or where to put other people at risk. That's exactly what happened. Let's assume we are this. We have stolen the land. Do we deserve to be put at a risk of being attacked? Would you yourself want to be put in a situation where you can be attacked? Where your faith is really fine because a few are thieves? I think there's a decorum for dealing with that. Let us turn to the... Honorable Andrew, Chair, your time is up. 20 minutes. I'll add just you three minutes, minutes yeah. to wind up. Eh? Okay, three minutes. Yeah. I'm very thankful. Let us turn to the issue of the appointment of the governor's husband, husband to the Mary Service Board. You've told this honorable committee and the chair 
that the appointment was made on 30th of September. Yes. And that the incident that happened at the Meru, the Meru Youth Service Center was on the 17th of October. After the appointment. Yes, they happened after. Had uh, the governor's husband, prior to the meeting of 17th, visited the Meru Youth Service Center? Sure, he did. And they came up with this idea that the land is grabbed by the diocese. So it seems he's doing very executive work, looking into the details of all that happened. While Actually, in our in the, in the Meru Youth Service, there is no position as that. And if it's, he is appointed from a point of probably uh, CSR, I, it's understandable. But then I think that was slightly outside the mandate of such an uh, uh, office, which in itself does not exist in law. I think that is all for this witness, Honorable Chair. Thank you. <coughs> the attorneys for the governor, cross examine. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good evening, Father Elias. Good evening, I note that we share How are you? So you're my namesake. Yes. Good evening. Uh, first of all, confirm that you're here in your personal capacity. You've not been sent by the church. I am not sent by the church. I came personally, particularly because I'm a psychologist also. Thank I you, understand you. I our behavior. You, you have answered the question. Yeah. Confirm also that you're not here on behalf of the Meru uh, Youth Service Board. Yes, I am not on behalf of Meru Youth Service. Let us go to your witness statement as captured under uh, uh, volume 5, specifically at page 16, paragraph 7. You accuse page 16, Chair, of volume 5 that's paragraph 7 you accuse the governor that soon after the elections in 2022 August she began public incitement and vilification of rallies in her rallies against various leaders and you quote them including the speaker of the county assembly of Meru is that true yes has the speaker raised any complaint of being vilified by the speaker, by the governor? I raise it as an interested citizen. Has, has the speaker has himself raised that concern? I don't, I don't know. I'm not in the know. Has he sent you to represent no. his worries? No. You've also brought, rather, tag the name of the senator of Meru. Again, has the Senator of Meru raised any issues against the governor? Has he sent you to represent him? No. You have talked of church leaders. Mm -hmm. Has any church leader sent you? I've sent, my, I'm sent myself. I'm a church leader. You're a church leader? Yeah. So why are you talking about yourself when you say church leaders? I'm there, and I was with my two brother priests. You so, are yeah. an individual. Yeah. So the words here are in plural. Leaders. Okay. Are you representing the other leaders? I'm presenting myself. Thank you. You've talked of Njorincheke elders being vilified. Have the Njorincheke Council of Elders complained against the governor? Not of which I know. Have they sent you to represent their worries? No. Members of National Assembly. Has any member of National Assembly again raised any issue with the governor? I don't know. You do not know. Mm -hmm. Yet, this is your statement, and Yet. you want this committee to uphold the impeachment on grounds of information that you have no idea of. Well, I have the idea, I've seen it, I have heard her, and I've seen her point out things about other leaders. So I have an idea. What I do not have is their mandate to represent them, or I'm not yet representing them, but I have seen it as a citizen of Meru. Thank you. Order, 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 Father. He is not challenging you. He's making an intelligent understanding of the fact that in paragraph 7, you have negated everything 
the only thing you have owned is not le church leaders, but you as an individual. So he is wondering, should we still take this as part of your evidence since you have negated it? If you can clarify that further, we have no problem. Well, if I stand as a church leader, it's admissible. Probably may not be leaders. But uh, if what I have so had experience with others who may not have sent me, I don't know if I should ask a question. Can a citizen represent people who may not read what is going on? Can someone talk about it? That's what I am doing, me included, as a leader. Thank you. Let's go to the events that took place on 17th of October 2022. Mm -hmm. You state in your statement that you were accosted by the governor's security detail. Is that still your position? Yes. As I stood to ask the two priests whether we can leave as I read the emotions of the group of the crowd was going up. A number of them came between me and the governor, and I wasn't going to the governor. I was going to the priests. And they started uh, pointing out that yeah, you want to hit the governor. And I was like, well. So I left. I sat down. Then after I got the call, I left. I realized the situation wasn't. Have you lodged any complaint of your assault by the governor's security detail? It's part of this. Or have have, have you made a formal complaint? Where? You actually say that it's part of this. Yes. I presume you're talking about the impeachment process. Did you petition the Meru County Assembly to impeach the governor on account of you being accosted by a security detail? I only came as a witness. Did you come as a witness at the County Assembly proceedings? No. You did not. Did you record any statement with the County Assembly of Meru? No. Did you file any affidavit? This is what I only have. This At the county assembly proceedings, did you participate in any way? I just, council, I just said no. You just said no. Yeah. You have said that uh, at paragraph 14, page 17, that the governor began inciting the crowd against the Catholic Church and the bishop of the diocese. As a result, the crowd turned rowdy and the, as the governor went on a rant falsely accusing the Catholic Church of grabbing public land. Is there anywhere in the impeachment motion that the governor is on record stating that the church has grabbed public land? On the motion or on a uh, video? The videos are part of the motion, so even yes. on, the, on the videos? Yes. Has that been produced in court? I mean, yeah. in these proceedings? I just came in. Are you able to point us specifically to that part where the governor is calling the church leaders grabbers of public land, accusing them of uh, cartelism, extortion, greed, corruption, and intimidation? Is Re there anywhere? If I, review, if, I review the, if I review the video I met, I can remember the whole process I told, especially when I was talking, because she was interjecting, you couldn't give even a coherent idea. She would interject and all and say all these things, and there were cameras all over. So, so I want so, to be. So the, the answer is you were not able to point us specifically to that place where the governor utters those words. On the video. Anywhere. You are not able to do that. It's a no. You are not able to do that. Well, if I've, uh, the videos provided, but the particular video current through that time, I remember very well. Thank you. Uh, at paragraph 20, you say that uh, you walked out before the event ended. And yes. later you learned, as confirmed from the video clips before the Senate, that the governor concluded a false rants by conducting a mock prayer. Yes. My question is, so the whole event was captured. Okay? That part where you're being accosted by the security detail, was it captured? I have not seen through, a clip of it. You have not seen any yeah, yeah. clip of it. So had you been accosted, we would be seeing a video 
of not that necessarily it depends with who recorded and uh, not necessarily let's move on to the issue of the ownership of uh, the land where Igoji school is it is not true that the diocese of Meru is the owner of that property it is not true is it true or not true First of all, council would like to let you know I came as a witness. No, to it's the, it's to a the direct board. question, and you said the governor, rather you were actually invited to that meeting because you had prior knowledge of the facts surrounding the ownership of Igoji. The leasing of the land. Exactly. I'm asking you a direct question. The diocese is not the proprietor or owner of that property. If by proprietor means trust ownership, it is. Is it the registered owner of that property? That's different. No. It is not. I want you to look at uh, page one, 113 of volume 2 of the governor's response. Page 13. There you will find a lease agreement. Are you able to trace that document? I don't have that volume. Perhaps your counsel can assist you with uh, that volume. 113. Yes. At the recitals clause, A, can you read what the lease agreement purports to say? That is whereas, that's A. Yes. The land... Lord is in the a, landlord here is the diocese. Yes, it's a just and proprietor, a less of all that property. So it is not lisa. true. You've just confirmed that the diocese is the, is the registered proprietor. So it is misleading for this lease agreement to purport that the church is the registered proprietor of this property. The registration to Rins County can, uh, that's the green card. County government. Yeah. So it is not. But I would like to tell you, I'm not the. Thank you. I'm not. I'm Let us go to page 146 of the same document. We do have an historical search of the property. Who is listed as the registered proprietor of that property? It's a Meru County. Meru County. Yeah. So when the governor then raises questions as to why. The Meru County is paying rent of its own property. Isn't she within a right to question such transactions? Yes, but with some Thank you. lack Thank you. of information, background information. Thank you very much. Council, how many, how many more minutes do you need? You have run out of your time. Uh, if I have three minutes, Chair, I will conclude. How many? Three minutes. Three? Yes. If I very good, very good, very good. Uh, put your finger on your three minutes. Thank you. Let's go to page 146 of page 147 rather of volume 2 still. Sure. Do you see the said document confirming that the title deed to that property was issued on 15th of February 1984? I see to whom it. was the title issued? Meru County Council. Meru County. So when the church states that this is their property and they're entitled to rent for 60 years, isn't it a distortion of facts? But uh, I'm not here for the witness for the church. You're but confusing me. I am not here for right. that. Your own statement confirmed that you are called by Father Celestio to go and attend to this matter because you had prior knowledge as of the a, issues but as a member of the MYS, not as a legal land owner of the diocese. So ask me things that pertain to me. Let's talk about your membership at uh, MYS. You are a co-opted member yes, of the board. According to the uh, act uh, you, section 7 and you are indeed nominated or appointed by the previous governor yes i rested to that uh, to that extent
Hans Jørgen. Ja. Do you have any personal interest in this matter? Personal interest? Yes. My personal interest from where I sit and stand is that I would rather see a Linda who does not abuse people in public. I understand what verbal abuse, humiliation uh, does to people. We are complaining of anxiety, depression. Chair, chair intervention. Chair. Yes, uh, Vice. Father has been asked a, a different question. He's answering something else. Can he answer the question from the council? Chair. Council, can you repeat the question so that Father can respond? The question to you? is, do you have a personal interest in this matter? Yes. Yes, you do. I have a Thank you. I, that, it was just a yes or no. Thank you very much. The last question is, is the church above the law so that no one is supposed to question any acts even where they feel that the church has committed Again, a counsel, I am not speaking for the church. That is all for this witness. Thank you. Uh, my son, Boniface. Uh, Honorable Chair, I have a few questions for the witness in the examination. I will refer the witness to Article 3 of the Constitution and Article 258 of the Constitution. He can begin with Article 3. I, I want him to read it aloud, Honorable Chair. You can read aloud. Defense, defense yes. of this Constitution. Every person has an obligation to, res to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution. And then 258, which is in Chapter 17. Enforcement of this Constitution. Every person has the right to institute court proceedings, claiming that this Constitution has been contravened or is threatened with the contravention. Paragraph 2. In addition to a person acting in their own interest, court proceedings under clause, clause 1 may be instituted by a person acting on behalf of another person who can act in their own name, a person acting as a member of or in the interest of a group or a class of persons, a person acting in the public interest or D, an association acting in the interest of one or more of its members. So, from those two provisions, any person can bring proceedings to enforce the Constitution? Yes, yes. And that confirms, or rather, in what capacity then did you bring these proceedings? I brought them from a personal capacity. Of course, I carry all those other identities as a priest and feelings when who I am is attacked but I carry it as a person and a citizen who cares that there are people who may not be able to even read when something is wrong. From a community psychologist who I am, I can tell when something is wrong. And the Constitution gives, him, gives me reason to say something isn't right here. Honorable Chair, I would want this Honorable Committee and the Honorable Chair to take judicial notice of the fact that this committee sits as a, as a high court. So when Article 258 refers to court proceedings, it would include this committee, which sits as a high court for uh, purposes of this raise proceedings. Your voice. I'm saying, Honorable Chair, a judicial notice of the fact that this Honorable Committee sits as a high court for purposes of these proceedings. So Article 258 would extend to this committee. Honorable Chair. Go on. Father. Sorry, sorry, there's a small uh, objection there. Honorable Chair, I wanted to find out whether that's a, an issue we should have an occasion to address. It's a point of law, but uh, it's, a, it's an issue of law that even goes to the jurisdiction of this committee and the scope of the work as an investigative body of uh, the parliament. We had desired to receive guidance from the chair whether we should converse that as an issue. In what capacity is the members, honorable members of this committee sitting? Are they investigating 
Are uh, they he here to hear uh, a matter of a nature of a constitutional petition that should have been filed in the High Court? I think it's important we have a uh, clarity on that. Okay. Thank you. Honorable Chair, I think it is the entire case of the Governor that this is a quasi judicial process. And they have been on record saying that many times in these proceedings. So it is, in fact, Article 258 does not relate to filing of constitutional petitions because those are provided for in Article 22 of the Constitution. So any person can bring proceedings, whether in the court or even in the assembly or even in this chamber, because for purposes of impeachment proceedings, this committee sits as a high court. And we are told in the morning that it can, it can even summon witnesses to give evidence before this committee. So I think that, I hope that clears the air. Uh, thank you, Council. Have you finished addressing me on 258? Yes. Have you finished addressing me on 258? Yes, I'm done with 258, Honorable Chair. Where were you in 2010? You? I, I was in Class 8, Honorable Chair. Class 8. In 2008 is when this constitution came in force. 2010. Where were you in 2005? I was in class three. In, class three. Yes. in 2005, when you were in class three, I was seated at the Bombers Conference at Bombers of Kenya when we were laying the ground at the Bombers Conference that eventually progressed and gave us this constitution. Since there is a priest in the house, I'll remind you that uh, it doesn't add any bonga points when you preach to a church choir. We were there before you were. We are the creators of Article 258. So what exactly are you looking for by referring to 258? The point, Honorable Chair, Article 3 of the Constitution, let me begin with Article 3. It provides that any person can defend the Constitution. Any person has a right to do what, okay, not anything, but they can bring proceedings to defend the Constitution. Every person has that obligation. And it speaks to what Council asked in cross-examination, whether the priest is purporting to hold brief for the CS Agriculture, for the Senate of Meru County, or for the MPT Ghanaian So the response, Honorable Chair, is that the priest need not have instructions from the CS Agriculture or from the Senator, any person aggrieved by the utterances of the Governor can bring proceedings to defend the Constitution. That is what Article 3 provides. And Article 258 provides that any person acting in the public interest can bring whatever proceedings to defend the Constitution. Uh, Chair, I, th I think, I think Council has made his point and uh, should now proceed with his uh and, and, and you can always make submissions at the close of your case on some of those things uh, so that I'm we, guided on we make some progress, Chair. So that the record is not hanging, this is the affidavit by the priest. Yes. And in this affidavit, go to paragraph 7. on page 16. I'm there, Chair. Yes. It is the evidence of the priest on oath that he is speaking on the issue of verification of the Catholic Church. Yes? I think the priest is speaking to verification of various leaders, including the Catholic Church. Yes, I'm going specifically to the church because you are in this sitting when the priest amended paragraph 7. Yes. And said that the issues pertaining to other people mentioned there, and during JK, Senator, MCS, uh, and so on, 
it is not his evidence. That his evidence is as far as he is concerned. So, since he is speaking to on the issue of the church, is it not fair that the lawyers of the governor ask him about matters before this committee pertaining to the verification of the Catholic Church? And the governor is accused, counsel, of having in quotes falsely accused the Catholic Church for purporting to receive the rent which is not deserved. So in the process, the counsel for the governor has used these proceedings to prove that the property actually doesn't belong to the Catholic Church and he has put an excess. So how does he run away from there and then you help him to go and now hide in the constitution in article 258? Why can't he just... Honorable Chair? Yes. Article 2, Article 3 of the constitution. Article? Uh, my reference to Article 3 of the constitution, and Article 258, yes. is in response to the general context of paragraph 7 that the governor has been going around vilifying other leaders. And this has been consistent in the cross-examination of not just this witness, but other witnesses. Perhaps, maybe, when we come to the, our closing argument, we'll be able to address that point, that indeed our witnesses could have made the allegations he made against the governor of vilifying other leaders without... They did, in fact, they do not need the express permission of those leaders, because it is in defense of the Constitution and any Chair. citizen... Chair, you know uh, can, can I just interject, uh, Chair? Yeah, I'll give you. Uh, let, me, let me finish my flow of thought. So, Council, uh, if you may take your seat. Uh, lead Council, you will have to do your final submissions carefully because then we have an affidavit which has evidence in paragraph seven that has been amended by the witness and yet the same witness has signed that affidavit so you drive it nicely during submission it is it is it is not a point of law if we are want... guided chair yes, yes we are guided and i think uh, the only point my colleague is trying to to bring to the attention of everyone there has been a narrative running since morning that why are you holding brief for so and so and he's not complaining and the only point my colleague was trying to make in this line of questioning is that there is no legal requirement that the persons who are vilified should complain or file a witness statement before you because if the vilification breaches the constitution any person can take up that matter it doesn't have to be the person who was vilified in this case the church in this case, the senator, in this case, the CS for agriculture, or indeed any of the many people. The only point we are trying to uh, make, Chair, is that, and uh, uh, you forgive us because it, as these questions arise both from our adversaries and from the plenary of, of the Senate, for us we have a duty to ensure that especially the decision maker, which is the Honorable Committee, understands if a question is asked that suggests that there is a legal requirement that the senator complains in person and that the priest or whoever other witness cannot speak on his behalf, then we have to attempt to show that is not the law. And that's all we're doing. But I'm guided, Chair, when we get to the closing statement, my, I promise my team will not revisit this issue again so that it doesn't waste more time. We're already so late. Thank you. Uh, I had uh, my vice chair 